In 1960's Brave and the Bold issue 28, writer Gardner Fox debuted an all-star team of superheroes known as the Justice League, presented as the best that DC Comics had to offer, fighting shoulder to shoulder in one must-read comic book. The enormous success of the JLA saw the popularity of superheroes begin to rapidly increase, especially when it came to team books. Most notably, Marvel Comics' first family, the Fantastic Four, were created soon after in response to the JLA's success, as other ensemble books such as the X-Men and the Teen Titans followed soon after. But there's one superhero team that kind of went under the radar for mainstream fans, one unashamedly weird and obscure, full of freaks, rejects and misfits, that would go on to inspire one of the most creative and faithful depictions of what makes superhero comics themselves so beloved. I'm talking, of course, about Doom Patrol. What the fuck is the Doom Patrol? Doom Patrol is one of my favourite superhero TV shows, and genuinely one of my favourite series of any kind in recent years. And I think it serves as a fascinating case study of how to bring these obscure and peculiar characters to life in an incredibly earnest way, embracing the things that made them and superheroes in general become so popular in the first place. So, in this video, I want to break down how Doom Patrol brings its band of unlikely heroes to life, and how the show manages to demonstrate the weird and wonderful nature of the medium that inspired it, and how the show exists as an ultimate celebration of the unique characters and ideas at the heart of superheroes and comic books. Before we continue though, I just want to let you all know that this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is an award-winning secure VPN that encrypts your online data to help you stay private and protected every day. It's fast and easy to use, and easy to install and run on unlimited devices with a single subscription. With Surfshark, you can access content blocked in other countries, as well as international versions of streaming services such as Netflix. You can also use Surfshark to watch YouTube videos that might be geo-blocked to your location. Surfshark also secures your data with industry-leading measures and a strict no-logs policy, with over 1,800 servers in 63 countries. Surfshark has a 30-day money-back guarantee to give users plenty of time to try it out risk-free, and as part of a special Black Friday deal, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals forward slash Owen and enter promo code Owen for 83% off and four months extra for free. Created by Arnold Drake, Bob Harvey and Bruno Premiani and first appearing in My Great Adventure issue 80, the Doom Patrol are a team of super-powered misfits brought together by Dr. Niles Calder helping them through their own personal traumas, whilst collectively using their gifts for good. The team, initially consisting of the Chief, Negative Man, Elastigirl and Robot Man, would go on to feature an array of unique characters from each corner of the DC Universe, from the likes of Beast Boy, Crazy Jane, Danny the Street, and Flex Mentallo. The Doom Patrol comics have had a number of different revivals and reinventions since their creation in June of 1963, originally being killed off due to poor sales in 1968, only to be revived a decade later by Paul Kupperberg. Since then, various writers such as John Byrne and Gerard Way have all brought their own unique takes on this team to life, though arguably no one has had a greater impact on the Doom Patrol than Grant Morrison. Morrison's run on the title, which lasted from 1989 to 1993, is viewed by many as the definitive version of the team, creating many of the established characters and stories we know today, as well as diving deep into the alienation and trauma at the crux of these characters, cementing them as a patchwork superhero family of freaks and misfits. The Doom Patrol TV series, launched in February 2019 as part of the DC Universe streaming service, resembles Morrison's iteration of the team most closely, both in terms of characters and plot, as well as the overall thesis of the show. It's true that there have been no shortage of live-action superhero TV shows over the past few years, especially when it comes to adapting various DC characters, and yet I don't think I've seen anything that embodies the spirits of comics and superheroes quite as well as Doom Patrol. In short, Doom Patrol exists as an incredibly goofy and satirical love letter to the oddities, those who believe they don't fit in with society, and celebrating the things that make them so unique. 
It's a show that I honestly can't believe actually got made, but equally am so glad that it did. Unlike many other films and TV shows that focus on these more outcast type superheroes, Doom Patrol doesn't run from its admittedly campy roots, attempting to ground itself deep in realism to not alienate casual viewers. You actually go outside in these things. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? Instead, it wears its heart on its sleeve, celebrating just how weird and wonderful superheroes can be, and how weird and wonderful the Doom Patrol are. At the time of this video's creation, Doom Patrol has released two full seasons and a total of 24 episodes, with the most recent season premiering earlier this year on HBO Max. However, for the purpose of this analysis, I want to specifically look at the show's initial 15 episode season, and how it exists as one of the purest and most endearing depictions of superhero comics brought to life that I've ever seen. The show's plot focuses on a group of misfits, who after each having experienced a tragic and traumatic event, are rehabilitated by Dr. Niles Calder, aka The Chief, after Calder is kidnapped by the omnipotent and self-aware villain Mr. Nobody, the team consisting of Robot Man, Crazy Jane, Negative Man, Rita Farr and Cyborg, are forced to thrust themselves into the spotlight and rescue the Chief, fighting both against and alongside an array of DC Comics' wildest concepts and characters in order to save their leader. Upon watching the initial season, one of the things that stood out to me most was just how character-driven this show really was. While nobody's taking of the Chief happens at the climax of episode 1, and the quest to rescue him serves as the overarching plot of the entire season, the show isn't afraid to slow down this story in order to tell smaller and more introspective ones with the various members of the team. In fact, much of the season is devoted to deconstructing and unravelling each member of the Doom Patrol, exploring their past trauma, mental illness, disability, and very human emotions. While the concepts of each of these characters may sound insanely silly, the various Doom Patrol members are brought to life in a way that makes them some of the most real and relatable superheroes ever brought to screen. For example, my favourite character in the show is Larry Trainer, aka Negative Man, a former Air Force pilot with an alien spirit trapped inside of him. Throughout the show, Larry grapples with his personal demons and regrets, often reliving moments of his life before his accident, torturing himself over the things he wished he'd done. In particular, it's revealed early on that although Larry had a wife and two children, he was secretly in love with his fellow officer John Bowers, and it's this fear of being happy with John that torments Larry through much of the first season, ultimately leading to an emotional confrontation between the two decades after they last saw one another. Likewise, much of the first season centres around the character of Cliff Steele, a former NASCAR driver who, after suffering a horrific car accident that left his body destroyed, has his brain transplanted into a robot body by the Chief. Particularly in the pilot episode which is largely built around Cliff's backstory and his accident, he grapples with the fact that decades have passed since his accident, his wife is dead, and his now adult daughter had been raised by his former best friend, who was secretly having an affair with his wife. Guilt especially plays a central part of Cliff's character. Not only does this guilt manifest in explosive behaviour, displaying many instances of rage and depression, but also in how he attempts to be a father figure to Crazy Jane, in a way he never was for his real daughter. Jane's character is also deeply fascinating in the show, and offers an incredibly visceral and true-to-life depiction of trauma and mental health. We learn that as a child, Jane was abused by her father, and as such, developed 64 alternate personalities, each with their own unique powers and abilities, to protect her. Jane and Cliff's relationship is actually one of the show's greatest strengths in my opinion. While the two don't always get along with Cliff's attempts to treat her like a daughter, almost suffocating Jane at times, he serves as a reminder that despite all of the trauma and the pain she may have suffered, there's always still someone out there who genuinely cares for her. And this notion of each member of the Doom Patrol learning to come to terms with themselves and their own issues through the support of the other members is a pivotal part of the entire show. While their problems and traumas may be unique to them, Larry, Cliff, Rita, Jane and Vic all learn how to cope and move beyond their pasts through the help of one another, 
and slowly become better people for being the Doom Patrol. This is perhaps best demonstrated by a scene from Season 2, which flashbacks to Larry's first day at Doom Manor and his first encounter with Rita, where he confines in her and describes himself as a lost cause, to which Rita tells him, Lost causes aren't lost if there's someone to fight for them. And this statement here is everything that Doom Patrol is truly about. For all its wild, fantastical and over-the-top concepts, it's ultimately a show about healing, learning to accept your past and not be defined by your worst actions. And it's in that balance between the silly fun of classic superhero stories and the truly relatable emotional aspects that makes this not just one of the best shows on TV in the past few years, but a truly great encapsulation of how superheroes exist not just to entertain, but to reflect and help us understand our own personal issues as well. In summary, Doom Patrol is truly a superhero TV series like no other. It not only brings to life the qualities that made these particular characters become so beloved with comic book fans, capturing the unique essence of what makes Doom Patrol work so well, but it also manages to maintain such an empathetic and relatable core. To say this show is a comic book brought to life is an understatement, both in its story and spirit. It feels like an almost perfect translation of Grant Morrison's seminal comic series, bringing with it all of the silly, over-the-top and fantastical aspects of the team, but not without making sure that the show's characters were unquestionably relatable and incredibly human. Personally, I was completely blown away upon first watching this series, and upon revisiting it for this video, my fondness and sheer love for it has only grown even stronger. The show's blend of the fantastical and the emotional makes Doom Patrol feel like an honest celebration of the brilliance of comic books and superheroes, how the medium can be simultaneously so campy, zany and outlandish, as well as so incredibly honest and relatable. In short, Doom Patrol is exciting, ridiculous, bizarre, hilarious and downright heartbreaking at times, and throughout it all, it reminds us just why we love these characters and concepts in the first place. It's truly a love letter to the genius of superheroes and comics, and that's why, to me, Doom Patrol isn't just a great celebration of these incredible mediums, but it's genuinely nothing short of a perfect superhero TV series. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. Now, if you enjoyed this video on Doom Patrol, I wanna let you know that this is part of a collab project called Praise Patrol. There are a whole bunch of really fascinating and brilliant Doom Patrol themed videos, and I will leave a link to the official playlist down in the description. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics though, please consider subscribing and hitting the notify bell so you stay up to date with all of the new videos we release. And if you enjoyed this video, there should be some others on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want to help support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash owenlikescomics. And if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter, just at owenlikescomics. Again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. So until then, take care and keep reading.